Good morning, everyone. I just thought I would show you, share with you some trauma. I know that you don't want to see trauma so early in the morning, but trauma you're going to see. I um, managed to do some repairs this morning. I'll start some repairs this morning. So maybe you'll see me fix a couple of things. This is a Waterman 55, I think. Um, and it's been out of my use for years and years and years. And I'm looking at it again for the first time up close and seeing why maybe I haven't used it. I have a hundred year pen in it instead of the original number five for some reason. But what you don't see maybe in this light is that there's a big crack in the nib which I just noticed right now. Let me just draw it out so you can see it. So here's the nib, and there's the breather hole and the slit, and there's a crack. Damn it all. And it does that sort of thing. So it's on borrowed time. It doesn't go all the way to the back. Just right there in the middle. It's like the San Andreas fault in the middle of my pen. And how that happened, I have no idea. Like, why would it crack in the middle? It has a really, the nib is really quite nice, uh, despite, in spite of the crack. Um, so I'll use it until it finally breaks. Um, it may have years worth of use left. It says Waterman's right here, Waterman's. And the crack goes through the D in 100, dread, the first D in 100. Yeah. And it's moving slowly but surely the base of the M. Waterman. Waterman. It's right there. And there's the breather hole right there. So it has this much space before the nib will be useless. Now how, what, what can I do with that? I can draw maybe 20 or 30 more drawings. I can um, do quite well with this pen while it still exists. Speaking of cracks though, the reason I am starting this video is Walt Eversharp, in their wisdom, tried to do something that would help people from getting cracks here, help you from developing cracks at the spot where cracks normally happen, which is at the cap lip or more importantly, right here. So they decided that they would fit inside of this a little sleeve of metal, which would keep that from happening. Well, see, there you, there you see the metal it, out of focus. Come on, get, get in focus. And it's a piece of very corrodible aluminum or something and it what it did when it got moisture in it it would expand or corrode and it would crack the threads so they were tried to do something to help it and they actually hurt it it was a lose-lose thing it cost more money to do um, it's they're very difficult to take apart 
uh, because the um, because there's corrosion there. So that was a dumb idea. Another thing that you often find on metal pens by wall, they're beautiful pens. Um, and one of the things I like about these particular things is the difference in diameter between the barrel and the cap. There's just that little tiny stepped up added thickness. And it's nice when you're drawing or holding it in your hand because you don't have that difference there, which you might have in a pen like this where that little bump pesters you. Sometimes you like that little bump, but sometimes it just gets in your way. It just makes you aware of it. So these pens are really nice because they don't have that little bump, but they are metal. And metal, what does metal do, class? Metal corrodes. And what happens is, on a pen like this, Moisture or ink can exist right there on the edge of that piece of section. And when this is a metal section, not only does it corrode the end of this thing, so you often will see... Hold on. Okay, where are you? Ah, damn it, Michelle. where is it? Billy? Does Billy have it? Yes. This is, this is Billy. Say hi, Billy. Billy. You often have this. So all of that, that used to be gold all the way to the end there. And now that has been corroded and chipped away and broken off. And now you've got that nasty looking business happening. Doesn't bother the way the pen writes. It, and if you sort of don't look at it, it doesn't bother the way it looks, but that's what happens. Um, these pens with a metal, with a uh, hard rubber section work better. But what happens, as you can see here, you see that little tiny bump that little line right there. You know what that means? It means underneath, on the inside of that pen, corrosion is working. A little moisture that got here is hitting the inner cap right there and eating away at the metal from the inside. And what you're going to have happen one day, you're going to take the pen out of your pocket and this part is going to come out. The rest of the pen will be in your pocket, leaking ink, because the corrosion that happens, again, there's the inner cap, and the corrosion eating away from the inside like a cancer will cause your pen cap to come apart in two, in twain. So sad. So when you, when you do look at pens like this out on the, in the field, you may see that line. That line is never going to go away. It's going to only get worse. Now it may, this pen has been on this planet for a hundred years and it may be on the planet for another hundred years without that getting any worse. It's not going to get better though. So you may wake up one day and take the pen out of your pocket and you'll end up with one half of a cap in your hands. I like how this person had that fixed that problem. I have a collection of pens that show homemade repairs and someone went to the jeweler in town, whatever town they lived in, or 
where they went down to their basement and they created this little sleeve that went over the top. So there it's broken. But they made this sleeve and attached it to the cap and whether they did a little maybe it's just meant to be friction fit like this and that was enough to hold it all together I don't know but I really I, I love when people do some jury rigging or jerry rigging to make their pens work after a trauma has occurred and I've got a, a whole collection well not a whole collection partial collection of about 20 pens, 20 or 30 pens that show homemade repairs like this. And many of the repairs, like this one, you can see a lot of wear on this ring. They continued to use the pen for years and years and years after the repair was made. These days, you just go and buy a new iPad when it breaks. Um, you, do, you don't get out your welding torch and fix it, your bailing wire and fix it. You just throw it away and get a new one. And uh, that's too bad that things can't be repaired like they used to be. So to me, this is more interesting than one that was in perfect shape. This is not in perfect shape, obviously, because it has that little thing happening. So, I'll probably end up keeping this. I mean, I am keeping it um, in my collection. I'll just find a barrel that this will fit on. See, here's another. This one, too, you see, is having that that seam, that, that the joint, the area where the pedal meets the metal. The metal meets the metal and that is causing trauma from within. So, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line, this will break in two. And there's really nothing to be done. Except write that novel, write that condolence card, write that poem, write that novel, draw that picture, because this pen still has a lot of good use in it, once I put a sack on it, that is. Um, we all get old. We all start having problems, and pens are no different. Um, but for a hundred years old, all of these pens are, are doing pretty well, even this broken nib, this cracked nib, still has words to write. Thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for those things when you're buying a wall pen. Thanks.